Well, I hope that I am doing this correctly, and this is my very first Facebook Live video, so if you are joining me, welcome. And if I am talking to no one, well, then I'll have a really great conversation with myself. I am Monique. I'm from Ladybug's Cabin here on the beautiful shores of the Swan River in Northwest Montana. I am a excited to be part of the Quilt Candy Virtual Trunk Show, and um, yeah, this is my first time on Facebook Live, so bear with me. <laughs> If, for those of you who don't know me, I am a pattern designer, I am a teacher, and I'm also a textile artist and quilter. And I absolutely enjoy really getting to in explore and inspire other people to do the same thing, really get into their uh, inner child and let them run around and have a good time. I have a mantra for my, for my business, which is follow your art. And by that, I mean, if we are constantly trying to manipulate and just dictate exactly how our art comes out, we miss out on a lot of the fun. If we consider the fact that what we work on is part of a partnership with what we're creating and it, it will have a voice as much as we have a voice, so it's a little bit more like improv where you start the process and then it goes in this direction. Um, when you can work that way, it's a lot less frustrating and a lot more fun and you will take yourself into places that you would never have dreamed of. Um, this is a great example of that. You know, back in 2010, I had no idea that this was going to take off as much as it has. I am thrilled um, now to have been teaching, you know, around the country, and I have over 24 patterns out there. I love working with the fabric companies, and I just absolutely enjoy what I do, and I hope that I can share some of that joy with you today. So, um, I only have 15 minutes. I've started my timer. For, you, for those of you who don't know about this little blog hop that's going on, it's a 15 minutes on um, every hour on the hour. And um, the list is on my page, but you can also go to the um, Designers Quilt Candy Virtual Trunk Show group, and that will guide you exactly where you need to go next. After me today is Heather Long at Coffee and Quilts. She'll be um, at the next, at the top of the next hour. So that's uh, 7 p.m. Eastern, um, Eastern time or five o'clock if you're here in the mountains like I am. So to get started, I am going to show you one of my newest patterns that uses a couple fun techniques. This is actually um, using the fabrics that um, I was able to get from Kathy Engel's new fabric line called Bloomers. This is a fun little rhododendron pattern. And it's hard to probably tell here in the camera what I've got set up but some of the flowers are actually three-dimensional. And how I managed to do that in my pattern, I actually explain how to use this really fun product called Terial Magic, which is a spray starch-like stabilizer, but it's a lot better than starch because no matter how much you press your fabric or iron your fabric with this, you'll never be able to scorch it. There's actually a lot of uses for Terial Magic. I just absolutely love its use in creating three-dimensional um, flowers on some of my applique patterns. So the rhododendrons is one of my newest patterns. It's brand new out there. Um, you can do it in different style or different colors. I also am not a dictator when it comes to the fact that you don't have to do the three-dimensional. You can just do it, you know, in your normal applique and no problem. But in the pattern, there is a little optional instructions in the back telling you exactly how I made the, these petals actually three-dimensional. And just to kind of give you a quick overlay as well, I've got some other flower patterns that also use the same technique. Um, this is Marisol's Garden, which is a sunflower that has petals um, that are three-dimensional as well as the standard applique. We have an Indian paintbrush. Again, you can kind of see how these petals come up and off. Part of the really cool thing about the Terial Magic Spray is that it keeps your fabric from fraying. So even if you're not using a batik, which I love to use, it will help those um, pieces not fray like they normally would if they were left alone. Um, I also have these fun little hollyhocks. This is a darker version. Um, it comes, the kits I do come in a lot of different colors. Um, and I actually have a really fun photo that maybe I'll try and post after this video is done of a class where there was a, a number of women and they all did different colors of hollyhocks. And so it was this beautiful garden of flowers that um, they all did in all these different colors. Another one of my newer patterns from last year is the Choir of Poppies. I have this in a couple different color waves. 
I designed it in more pinks. This is the red one. And then just this winter, I was playing around with actually creating it in oranges. And again, this is going to be really hard to see in this particular setup and how I have the camera. Uh, but I will have a little de demo that's going to be posted soon to my site telling you how I use some of the art quilting techniques that I love to use along with applique to show you how you can actually use some bobbin work and some really thick fun threads to make some of these centers really shine. It almost looks like beading, but it's really probably hard to see from this particular camera angle. Again, I will be posting a little video tutorial on all the different ways that I like to use the bobbin work in that regard. And that's just another example of how you can blend traditional quilting and traditional applique with some of these other fun and arty uh, techniques whether it's thread play, whether it's using material magic to create a three-dimensional quality, um, needle felting, there's a lot of different things out there that you can use. Um, actually, there's one other brand new little pattern called What's Up Buttercup. And this one, actually the dragonfly is three-dimensional. You can see he can fly off of the uh, thing there. And this is using a heat moldable batting in order to create the dragonfly. Again, inside the pattern there is all of the instructions on exactly how I did that. And you can choose to do it with the three-dimensional dragonfly, or you can choose to have it just flat, normal applique. I like people to be able to make their own choices and to play in the way it fits best for them. So I don't just do flowers. Um, I also love to do landscapes. Um, one of the things that I celebrate a lot, especially being from the northwest corner of Montana, is I love the national parks. Glacier Park is basically in close to my backyard. And so I, I have designed a number of patterns. Um, for those of you who know me, you will recognize. I started you know, with like the iconic red bus along the weeping wall. We have Lake McDonald here. And now this again, this looks a little bit more dramatic or um, difficult than it actually is the way I've designed this one. This was actually a pretty simple, um, even beginner applique pattern. Slightly larger, we have Hidden Lake, which has the little mountain goats up there. If you've ever driven to the top of Logan Pass at the top of Glacier, more than likely you have probably found a few little goats up there looking for some salt to lick. And brand new, absolutely uh, no one but uh, just a few of tester people have seen this pattern. But coming out this spring, we have Wild Goose Island. So this one's brand new, hot off the press. You've seen here first. Um, and I know that there's some questions going on along the side, and I will be happy to answer any of those after I'm done um, chatting at you. Um, for Yellowstone, just taking my time here real quick. <laughs> so Yellowstone, of course, I have the iconic Old Faithful. Let's see if I can get the light on there better. There we go, you can kind of see it better that way. And one of the things I love to um, tell people to do with the, um, the, the, the uh, geyser is in one of the fabrics, if you want to, you can actually use cheesecloth to make it look more ethereal and steam-like. And again, that's where the Terriel Magic's gonna come in handy because if you treat your cheesecloth with this, you can actually cut it like normal fabric as opposed to being really hard and you know to work with the terial magic will actually stiffen up your fabric whatever you're working with enough to make it really more manageable that's one of the many things that i love about it um, here is artist point and then we have uh, driving the golden gate which has the yellow bus and then around the river bend and the fun story about this one is um this was near the uh, on the given river and as i wanted was designing this particular pattern i was thinking about having a fly fisherman in there but it was just going to be too small for the scale and so i was actually up in my studio and um, my husband bob heard me giggling and he said what's going on up there and i said well a bison just ate the fisherman so you have a bison not a fisherman on that one so the other thing I wanted to show you really quick before my time is up here today is a brand new pattern that I have out. And you can see some of them behind me here. 
I have created a placemat pattern that is called Montana Settings because it has the shape of Montana included. However, you do not have to put the shape of Montana down on there as that's an applique. Um, inside the pattern, it's got four different placemat styles that you can choose from. So you can do um, the bear paw, you can do the delectable mountains, you can do the flying geese, or you can do the log cabin. All of those patterns for those placemats are actually inside the pattern. And then after you've decided which blocks you want to make, then you can choose which silhouettes you'd like to put on them. So here I've got you know the shape of the state and then an L. Um, and on this one, it's the flying geese pattern with the little fish jumping in the corner. And then this is a different bear paw one with, of course, a bear. I have designed a number of silhouettes that are, again, included in the designs are included in the pattern. And for the first time, I've actually partnered with a laser cutting company to actually have the silhouettes pre-fused and cut out already so that if you don't want to have to sit and cut, you actually can simply buy them ready to go. And I have a few of these actually that go in mirror images as well. So if you want your elk going to the right or going to the left, you can have your choice. All of these you can find um, on my website, which is ladybugscabin.com. And you know you can find the patterns, you can find the silhouettes. Again, I want to stress that you don't have to buy the pre-made laser cut um, silhouettes in order to use the pattern because all of those designs are in here. Is this is just a lot easier than having to sit and cut. Not all of us are insane as I am when it comes to actually enjoying tracing and cutting. Um, I think I get that from my mother. <laughs> but um, I did, I'd love to have the um, options out there so that people don't feel like they have to do it one way or the other. I absolutely get thrilled when I see how people take what I have done as uh, you know for my pattern and then what they where they go with it. Honestly, I consider my patterns to be more of an invitation than anything. I want to invite you, inspire you, and then I'd love to see where you go with it. Uh, I do have, oops, checking my time, almost done. Um, I have you know other patterns out there, quilts, as well as you know, the table runners and other projects out there. I'm gonna be doing another one of these on, I believe, Thursday. And I think for that one, I'm gonna have a little bit more fun and show you um, some of my fun that I do with ink tense pencils on some of my applique and other of my textile arts, just for some fun. And yeah, oh, I'm almost done. Again, thank you so much um, if you have shown up to spend some time with me today. I really look forward to getting to know more of the designers that are part of this really fun project. I hope that you are all staying safe, staying healthy, and for those of you who are inspired um, to make the, the fabric covers for masks for our healthcare workers and our people who are still out there working in the in society right now, I absolutely support you. And if I can help get you connected to a local resource um, or get you some supplies or whatever that is so you can make some masks as well, this is definitely a kind of a call to action moment. And I'm so thrilled by the amount of people out there who are taking the time to do that. So thank you again for spending a little time with me today. I am coming down to the last little bit. I promise I will go through your comments and questions and answer anything that comes from this. And yeah, thank you for being part of my very first Facebook Live moment. And have a lovely, lovely afternoon or evening, depending on where you are. All right. See you later.